let me run a brief of my life and see what it is like. I'd always carried a strange passion for God. I never knew it was going to be my lifetime assignment. I've told you before I got saved in 1969, I was 15 years old then. Got the privilege of preaching the first message in 1970. And from then I've had all kinds of opportunities in one leadership position or another in the body of Christ. At the age of 19, I was privileged to co-found a church which was my first pastoral experience in 1973. I got to that village for a 71 day walk, vacation time. And I said, is there any church here? They said, no. I said, not even Catholic? They said, no. And I knelt down in my little heart. I said, Lord, may I never leave this village the way I met it. I had no calling to ministry. So we began evangelism, one-on-one -on -one evangelism. I had a friend there who could speak the language of the place. So Abraham and myself now became a team. That's why I say I co-founded a church. Abraham was the interpreter. I was the preacher. And so people gathered. And in 40 days, we already built a grass church. They were first meeting in our home. And then in 40 days, we built a grass church. And by the day I was leaving, they handed over to me a mysterious gift, a lantern. The oldest man in the church presented that lantern. He said, the light to brought to our village. Let it shine right on the wall. Now, that was at the age of 19. We handed over that church to the UMCA mission when our time there was over. And they took over the church to carry on the assignment. I never knew my passion was only an expression of the plan of God that I had not known. Suddenly the mandate was delivered when I was 27. Now I'm 53. I've not wasted any aspect of my life. My prayer for you is that you get your bearings right on time. I began investing in books that I knew consciously from 1974. I'm buying and reading, buying and biting. I was buying and biting the books. God's light was turning on my heart. I was having series of encounters of all kinds. God was leading the way to go part time. Bless God, there is no regret today. If God has not reserved stars for you, He will not have called you here. The fact that you are called here means you are already enlisted as a star. The Bible says, therefore, let everyone abide in the same calling wherein is called. And for these 26 years, I've not had an alternative plan. Neither have I thought of an alternative thing to do. If your eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. You can't be a star athlete and be a star musician at the same time. You have to be one. You may sing as a hobby. You can't have singing as a profession. A number of us play some games, but we are never thinking of becoming a star in the things we play. Because we are, not, we are not eligible. We are having it as a hobby. It takes a professional approach to how to become a star. I read 39 biographies to prepare myself for ministry. How many? 39 biographies of proven ministries. Give attention to reading. If you don't want your youth to be despised, if you don't want to lose your place in the race, give attention to reading. In getting Covenant University started, I did an explorative study of a number of proven, long-standing universities like Harvard, like Cambridge, like Oxford, like Yale, like Princeton. I studied them so much that I could tell their story without having to open any paper. And how they developed. And I came out with a verdict. Covenant University is a new generation Harvard. And you can see the wave is causing in only five years. 
give attention to reading. Many are too lazy. You are busy playing music every day, watching AIT, watching CNN. That's not how to become a star. A star is committed to information hunting, explorative studies. Because the information you don't have, you cannot apply. And what is wisdom? Applied knowledge. So the knowledge you have not acquired, how do you apply it? We got to Kaduna when the church began 24 years ago and heated the place in five years. The north could not recover from it. In five years, we blew the place open. Five years. I've listened to you young men because you are strong. The truth is that certain things you'll be able to do now, a few years from now, you may not be in a position to do them again. Energy levels diminish with age. So put in the freshness of your strength to your vision. Something will happen. Let me conclude here. If you don't beat our record, you have not succeeded. If you don't beat the records of your parents, you have not succeeded. If you don't beat the record in your field, you have not succeeded. How many can see responsibility now? How many can see responsibility now? What it takes.